Well, hello, friends. It's Josh in the Quick Speed Shop. It's Labor Day weekend. I'm here. I'm taking a break from laboring, but I'm sure you guys are having a busy weekend. So today's video is going to be a little, uh, a little light. Not going to do a lot of content because I've been very busy and haven't had time really to do anything the last couple of days. Today's Saturday, and uh, I think we'll do a video of upcoming projects on the channel for the fall slash winter. And we'll take a look here. I'm in the uh, the backyard gas station build. We'll take a look at what's going on here. Got the Model A coupe behind me. Got the tow truck in the background. So let's take a walk around. Let's look at some projects and uh, see what we got to look forward to coming up in the later part of the year. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Okay, we'll start here. We'll take a look at the back air gas station. We'll take a look at what's going on here before the sun sets and then uh, move on to some vehicle projects. Well, last time in the video on this thing, I finished the uh, the front of the barn wood here. You can see my uh, vintage windows, which are hundred and something years old, probably the door too, and the barn wood. The windows and doors came from my friends around the corner and then the barn wood came out of my, my aunt and uncle's house. They put it in the seventies. Um, so, and it was pretty old then. So, well, that was, geez, that was almost like almost 50 years ago now. Man, time's flying. Anyway, so the, the barn wood's probably over 100 years old, and these windows and doors are probably encroaching on 100. So I got that all uh, roughed in and everything's built. I still have to do my trim work around the doors and the windows. That's going to be uh, some uh, pieces of barn wood cut down. But it looks mint, and there's going to be some signs and stuff on here. Now inside here, looking down the thing, you can see this is only about two two feet wide. And on here, on the girt boards from the metal siding, there's going to be shelves. And when you look through the windows, I'm going to store all my, my what do you call it, petro, petrol, petrolony or whatever, my oil cans and all that stuff, I'm going to display on the shelves. So when you look through the windows, it'll look like, a, you know, a display case pretty much. And then I'll have a lot of trinkets in here and all that. But it's I think it's going to be super cool. And if I want to get hide from the hide from the world, I can come in here in the world's smallest gas station office and hang out in here but it's gonna be mainly a display case. Also last video I showed putting in this drain here with the trencher. I went and I forgot to show you the end. Here's the end, it looks like some stones and gravel. And I've gotta rake all this lawn out here and get some straw in this and, gra and uh, grass seed, get all the rocks out of it. But this will like percolate down through here. Eventually there's gonna be a fence, uh, eight foot or 10 foot fence here to uh, store all my trailers behind the building. But the building's looking good. I've got a, now I, I've done the front with the barnwood. I'm gonna kirk, 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 fill all the sides in the rest of the barnwood and then button the thing up here. And there's still gonna be, if you can see my shadow right over here about right there where my hand is, there's gonna be a sign post with that Richfield sign I have about 10 foot in the air for this thing. So that'll be display and then it'll be a concrete island out front with the pumps. So it's coming along. So here the Model A tow truck's just kind of hanging out in the uh, the side lot here. It's going to be displayed under the overhang most of the time during the year, but right now I've got it because I'm working on it. It's just parked out here, and later it will be parked in the tall bay here, the 9-foot bay, to cl clear the boom. The boom's about 8 foot 4, so this 9-foot bay will clear it. I got the Model A coupe hanging out here in the middle right now for the summertime because I drive it around, but this will be stored indoors for the winter, and then I've got the, the double-A doodle bug over here, kind of in a semi-permanent location for now until I get a canvas garage set up to put that. But I already got the thing filled up, going to usage here. The backyard gas station build's coming in handy. Out here in the back, my mid-winter, probably starting around, I don't know, December, Christmas time, is gonna be the 80 Dodge Power Wagon Project. It's a W200, and if you saw my kit, well, start video, I got the 75 uh, 250 over here, and it's, uh, or this is maybe a W350, I can't remember. Anyway, it's got, it's got the, uh, the chassis that's going to go under the brown truck, and then I parted out a white two-wheel drive that's got a cab, so it takes, pretty much takes three Dodges to build one good one around here in western New York, but I've got this 80 Dodge project. I'm going to be working on that because I want to get this thing going, it's going to be super awesome. So pretty much it takes three Dodges to build one here in Western New York, This, but this power wagon is going to be awesome. It's going to be a heavy duty chassis, 360 Magnum motor, four speed. I'm going to put my dump box out of my other truck in here. It's going to be a really awesome old school beater uh, Dodge. You don't see too many Dodges on the road around here. So I'm getting super excited to build this truck. Hopefully I'm going to get it going here about December time frame. And then I'll be cruising it in the spring with it on the road. But a lot of junk Dodge action in one big pile here. 
Old Project Rusty Junk YJ is just hanging out. I'm using it for a, uh, a yard truck. It works pretty good. Moving trailers around and stuff. It's like a big four-wheeler, pop the doors off and stuff like that. Uh, my friend Tony's Jeeps are all down, so I haven't done any more wheeling with it, but I'd like to wheel the 33-inch tires. Maybe uh, take it somewhere on a trailer, I don't know. But for in the meantime, I've just been using it around the property. It's working pretty good for that. In the pole barn here, everything is a complete disaster. Got junk everywhere. But my plan is, hopefully the later this fall, is I got some scaffolding, or not scaffolding, what do you call it, pallet racking. I want to build a, uh, a pallet racking enclosure over my AMC Eagle here and put a wall of, uh, a plywood wall on it here and then have like a storage layer above it and all that. So I got all this junk in the way here, but I've got some pallet racking outside that I want to assemble. We'll do a video on that at some point. Got the L Buick that's hanging out, that's, that's working great on the road, no problem. This piece of equipment here is a louver press for punching louvers and hoods. Um, I, originally my uncle had it built and then my cousin had it and my dad used it and I've got it here. I've uh, just brought it down from the upper shop. I want to get this going in the fall, do some uh, louver and get it dialed in. I haven't, I've used it once or twice with my dad but I haven't really practiced or anything. But it did all the louvers on like the hood of my Studebaker and that car and he used to louver hoods for people. So I want to try to get that thing going and uh, get working. Got a new stack of tires for Project Green Machine, my F-250, need tires for winter. The Red Willys pickup here is sitting here. I haven't really done anything with this since I got the glass back in it. This was my dad's truck that we used to haul firewood on for like 40 years. My plan is to finish getting the door logos painted on at some point uh, to replicate the logo on the other side. I'll show you that in a second, but right now it's just trying to be a big shelf here. And it's just hanging out, chilling. My Studebaker truck, I've been driving that pretty much daily. That goes in and out here but not too much going on here in the pole bar now i was trying to build a shop in here but i've run out of money from the gas station project and run out of time so just kind of a usable space at this time here's the door logo i want to get this reproduced to stalder's atlantic service in owego new york this is the original service truck from the gas station if you're familiar with the the area it's uh the sunoco station on route 38 heading out of town but this is the truck that they bought new and that was their original logo paint on the side so i can get this touched up and then replicate it back on the other door originally but the jeep's just sitting here chilling at this time all right here we go in the shop here like i just told you i got the richfield sign to put up on the post i'll be doing that this fall getting that thing i got a fabricate a hoop to go around it to hold it i'll be getting that up at the gas station but car wise over here now i had a plan to do this last year but here's my 37 ford two-door sedan Still needs an engine swap. It's a 60 horse uh, flathead right now, which is super tired. It's a really early tin sided one. It's not the original engine to the car because uh, this car is like a uh, like a May ish build on here. But the end, it's got an early tin sided 60 horsepower V8 in it. I'm gonna pull that out. I have an 85 horse. Where is it? Buried over here. I've got an 85 horse out of a 46. I'm sorry, a 48 Ford. So it would be a 59 AB. That runs good. That's going to go in here with, uh, I've got the correct uh, original radiator for 85 horse application and I'll be putting it all in there. Hold on, somebody's calling me. Okay, I'm back. Take two after the phone call. So the 37 Ford, like I said, uh, what did I say? Anyways, the 60 horse is coming out, the 85 horse is going in or 90 horse, whatever the 59 AB is. And uh, I can't wait to get this thing going. I want to do it last winter. I put it back on the road, even though it's like immobile. So maybe that'll push me into working on it. This will probably be late, late fall to early winter. I hope to slide this over to the other side and get it going. So I'd like to be able to drive it in the spring. It would be nice to uh, have this car going again. I've owned it like nine years, I think, 10 years, and I've driven it like 25 miles. So it's in a very expensive display case sitting here right now. So I'd like to get it going and have some fun with it. It'll be my only flathead powered car on the road when I get it going and I would like to cruise back in time. This thing is going to be a late 40s uh, speedboat style custom. I'm going to, when I swap the drivetrain, I'm going to swap in a 48 Ford rear end that came with the, the engine and get rid of the 444 rear end gears because this is a 60 horsepower car. I'll put in the other rear end, which is probably 411s, I'm going to guess. But right now this car tops out about 50 miles an hour. So the 411s will give me another, you know, I'll be able to do like probably 60. 
and being a 48 Ford around, it's going to have the lowered spring for the updated rear suspension of the 48 Ford. So it'll drop the back of the car about three inches. And I might also put some shackles on it. I got to build a track bar to hold the rear end. And it's going to be all bolt on like 40 style custom stuff. I got the, the spider hub caps, black wall Firestone tires. It's going to have uh, headers and duels of glass packs. Um, I got some fiberglass skirts to put on the back to lower it. And it's pretty much going to look like a, a late 40s speedboat style custom tail dragger so i'm getting super excited about that as i was last year but hopefully i can get it going and get back on it the 37 ford and last but not least we got the 40 mercury chilling in here this thing better get done soon i'm really getting tired of working on it it's got a ton of things left to fix um, i'm pretty much going to get it roadworthy for now for this year and then go on and work on it probably on the springtime next year. Um, pretty much all I'm got to do in the next couple of videos coming out of this is going to bleed the brakes, time the engine, get it running, set it down, put the new wheels and tires on all the way around on it, and uh, start driving it here in the fall. I hope to put a lot of miles on it in the fall time for like the, in the next two months. Use it like as a daily driver. Hopefully there won't be any issues. Oh, actually, you know what? There is issues. I've got to fix the clutch. Ah, I keep forgetting about that. I got to fix the clutch in it. Sorry. So I'm going to put all that stuff on, get it down, get it fired up, running and driving, get it inspected. Then I can cruise it around a little bit in town. And once I get things, get the shop cleaned out because it's still a disaster. Pull the transmission out, fix whatever's wrong with the clutch, hopefully. Get that put together. Then I can drive it for the fall, use it as a daily driver, put some miles on it. So in the springtime, I've got to do some sus suspension mods. i got to change over to tubular-style A-arms. I'm going to put the uh, bigger Mustang II brakes on it. It's got the original 9-inch brakes on the front. I'm going to switch over to 11-inch Mustang rotors on the front and uh, do some tweaking in, on here, probably put the air conditioning back on, get that working. So I want to get the main things done, get it out of the garage, get it going, and uh, really getting tired of working on it. It's been like eight months here of... Uh, being up in the air in the garage so it needs to get done and get out of here so i can get on to other stuff here's the model a hot rod shop truck that's been my everyday driver pretty much been beating on it every day it runs good it works perfect it's loud and fun this is the next victim the 88 ford conline buggy van build i'm gonna be starting this within hopefully the next couple of weeks i wanted to take it to hershey in october but that's not going to happen now because it's you know five weeks away or whatever it is six weeks away so i'll be taking my f-250 project green machine again but i'm going to be cranking on this thing getting up in the full on boogie van build action so hopefully you guys remember the 70s remember some custom vans that's what's going to be custom van action and uh over here the old f-250 camper specials just hanging out been driving this i gotta really gotta get after this too it's still got a horrendous transmission leak it needs brakes needs a bunch of other stuff the dump box is going in the dodge and then i can work on it here but Hopefully I can sneak it in and at least fix the transmission and put the brakes on it and I got some free time. I don't know. Remember the Cherokee Chief plow truck that's just sitting here? I let it sink into the ground for uh, for eight months out of the year. It sinks in the spot over here. Eventually I'd like to put some concrete over here so I can have like a sandblasting area. But this thing's slowly sinking in the ground. I got to get this fired up in the fall and get it ready for plow truck action. But right now it appears to be home to spiders and probably lots of mice. So it's still here chilling. That's about it. All right, so I guess that's it for now. Got a lot of a lot of things on my plate. I'm always uh, planning out too many projects and then uh, only get like a third of them done. But I, I'd rather have too much going on than not enough things going on. So I guess the order is going to be finish the Mercury-ish, get it moving around, hammer on the Ford Boogie Van build, get that done by winter time start thinking about working on the Dodge, get the 37 Ford moved over, finally do that, get that done. Throw in some other maintenance crap along the way. Project Green Machine needs a bunch of work. Ball joints, tires, brakes. The blue F-250 needs uh, brakes, transmission work. Try to slide that stuff in there. Uh, finish up the backyard gas station build. I'm real, I really hammered on that pretty much a lot during the summer, so I that cut into my car building time. But I'm really close to getting the main structure of that thing wrapped up. Have some uh, maybe cool content to put up the signposts and stuff like that. But... I just kind of like built that thing on a whim. I, I I wanted to do it about May. I just like pulled the trigger and had to build it. So that, that really ate up a lot of my time and like cut all these projects in half. 
But I'm going to be back on the car content now pretty much full time the rest of the year. Um, and then uh, I'm also working on some things to try to help out, help with the video quality. Quality. I don't have the internet at my house, which you would think would be the first thing you need is the internet, which I don't have it because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to try to get some, uh, what uh, Elon Musk has that, that, got that Star, Starlink uh, internet with satellites and all that. So I'm going to try to do that. It's kind of expensive, but I think it'll help me to have the internet here so I can spend time here making more content. I could, might be able to do like a live stream or do more like stuff with Instagram, like live things and I got Wi-Fi or whatever. So uh, I'm going to try to get that going. And then uh, I have to do all my editing off-site. So now if I have the internet here, I can edit here, which means I can do a lot more better turnaround with things. Like some, like I, I film, I film like... Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, then I edit Monday and Tuesday, and I go do things like on Wednesday and Thursday that I need to do, you know, out in the world. So pretty much like going nonstop trying to make this content go, and it, it eat, really eats up a lot of time. And then my, my, my deal at work where I had to start working like 12-hour days and every other Saturday really cut into my progress build-wise. Like it, like it cut me right off the knees trying to get these cars done and stuff. So that's coming to an hopefully slowing down coming to an end here in the fall i won't have to work on saturdays and uh maybe only work late a couple days a week so a lot, got a lot of goals got a lot of projects lined up hopefully at least half of it pans out we'll see how it goes i'm trying to figure out through the youtube analytics what's going on with like the channel like i got a good su subscriber base that keeps growing every day so I really appreciate you guys subscribing and, and commenting. I, I, I read every single comment. You see, I like heart every single one that is a good comment. Like if you trash talk me, I'm not going to give you a heart and I might argue with you. But guess what? You wanted to argue, I'll argue back. Not a problem. That's how it works. Bam. Comments. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm trying to figure out the algorithm. Try to, because I, th I think I got content that a lot of people watch on other channels. And I see people that comment, subscribe on this channel watching a lot of other channels which started out the same level as me and they're up here and I'm still down here so I don't know if it's something I'm doing or it's like YouTube or it's like voodoo and black magic who knows but hopefully it can take off with the other channels and uh, like to do bigger and better things here so I'm working on that but in the meantime that's what's going on to the for the fall enjoy your Labor Day weekend and we'll see you next time right here at the quick speed shop